All right, week three of Tele 10 21. 21. Uh, I, I, I assume everybody can hear me properly. So uh, just uh, type something in the chat line if you could or speak up. All right, cool. All right, today is a quite eventful day. We were having some internet connection problems. Uh, there was, uh, there's a construction down the road. So uh, hey, sometimes that's what happens. Anyways, all right. So we're going to continue from what we stopped last uh, time and we're going to get uh, into the PA systems. So let me kill things up here. Uh, 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 all right. Is that the, uh, yeah, that's the proper one. Very interesting. All right, cool. Yeah. There I am. Introduction, uh, introduction, introduction to telecommunications, um, right? Because that's basically the, uh, it's a part of telecommunications um, a field that we're dealing with uh, here, network systems, all right? So telecommunications, uh, by the definition, it would be communication over a distance, just like telegraph or telegram, tele, 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 uh, basically stands for distance, um, conveying something over the distance, all right? And what do we use uh, uh, to communicate over a distance aside from sending a pigeon, which was sometime, you know, 600 years ago. So since then, we have evolved a little bit. So what do we have here? From a pigeon to an email or radio, that's also part of the communications. We can send some on a fax, which is used to be the new thing some years ago. And now it's becoming a little bit borderline obsolete. Television, television, sending the vision over a distance, all right? So, uh, Right now, not too many people can imagine life without it, without the TV, right? But then again, 600 years ago, people lived uh, that way. So anyways, pods, internet, VoIP, intranet, video conferencing, and other examples, for example, I don't know, uh, could be thousands. POTS stands for plain old telephone service. And this is the most basic telephone line you can get these days. And we will go over that in details. Internet and intranet. Internet uh, is the World Wide Web. It's basically the whole huge network that uh, that embraces the whole world. Uh, intranet. Uh, the difference between intranet and internet. It, uh, intranet is almost like um, uh, internet, but it is it would be enclosed into a small environment, like for example a company or a building. You could have internal network and you could have uh, uh, all the features of internet, but it will be intranet, right? Video conferencing, we know what that is. Uh, what else could we use um, in uh, as far as communications? Well, um, all kinds of data, uh, well, aside from VoIP. VoIP stands for voice over IP. So this is the newer version of telephony. So... Uh, uh, pods and VoIP, they go kind of in pairs still. Uh, VoIP, um, you know, uh, remember the song video killed the radio star? Uh, that's a song from 80s. Uh, so basically VoIP is killing the pods, but pod is still hanging strong. And uh, we will take a look at both. All right? uh, and then um, any kind of data communications, uh, satellite and whatnot. All right, so that's uh, as far as a bit of a spiel on examples. Yeah. All right, communication system essential parts. We are having a little bit of screen issues here. All right, uh, any kind of telecommunication system will break down to these basic terms. Um, and uh, it could be one basic system that starts with the input and ends with the output. Or it could be a system that has many of these as a subsystem uh, that uh, subsystems that consist of these elements. So let's just uh, quickly. Uh, do we have the next screen here? No. Okay. 
So input, uh, so basically we go from input to the output and let's analyze a couple of, well, all of them, all right? So input transducer stands for input. What is a transducer, all right? Uh, we'll take care of that in about a second. Then we have something that's called transmitter. Then we have a link that links uh, the sort of the transmission system into the receivage or receiving system and the signal is being processed and being used in some sort of way, right? So what is a transducer? We have input transducer and an output transducer. A transducer is a device or a component that would convey or convert one form of energy into another. For example, a microphone would be a transducer uh, because it conveys uh, or transfers the longitudinal sound waves, uh, basically a bunch of sound pressures compressing and uh, extracting um, or compressing or decompressing uh, in, with certain frequencies. And that's how we get uh, sound happening. And microphone is able to pick that up and convert that, you could say, mechanical energy of the air vibrating into electronic signal. So that's a transducer. What else would be a transducer? Well, a a thermometer could be a transducer. A thermometer would have an element that would pick up a, um, 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 they would sense the temperature. <laughs> we have an office environment here, so we gotta deal with that sometimes, eh? All right, so a thermometer would sense a ambient temperature and it would convey into something that could be understood by us humans. Uh, it could be the simplest way of having a little bit of a mercury um, um, element there. So that mercury would uh, rise or fall and we could have a scale there and uh, that would transduce into something that is visual. There are some more complicated thermometers that would transfer transform the temperature uh, send, they'll be sensing the temperature and transform this thing into electronic signals. So uh, transducers, transducer is a device that converts one form of signal onto another. Okay. Um, is a uh, media converter a transducer? Well, in some sort of a philosophical way, yes, but uh, technically pretty much no. Or it could be uh, if somebody is really stubborn, you could say that a media converter would be some form of a transducer, but it would be a really, really far stretch, right? So now we got uh, input transducer and output transducer. Let's say it's an audio system. Uh, so we would have a microphone here and we'll have some, that's called a loudspeaker. Loudspeaker or a speaker. A loudspeaker is a device that basically what we consider as a speaker, right? Which has a coil and membrane and it vibrates and uh, makes the air vibrate and it gets to our ears. So uh, uh, it, we could just get in, get to get used to calling it that way, loudspeaker, one word, right? Uh, so now uh, from the transducer, the electronic signal is being prepared and the transmitter does its magic or does its little thing here to convey that signal and prepare it for a transmission line to be transmitted further. So that's where all the signal processing begins. So we have input signal processing, right? And then we have a receiver that would receive that signal that transmitter would prepare and the receiver would um, understand or actually tune itself into that uh, signal that is being transmitted by a transmitter. And it would be, uh, uh, it would process the signal into something that could be used um, in any sort of way. It could be a sound, it could be a video signal, it could be a data signal, uh, all right? Uh, and it go, we would serve that signal into the output transducer and output transducer would convert the electronic signaling into something that's being used for whatever purpose it has to serve, all right? And now we have, between that, we have a link, all right? And with the link, um, most of the links that are known to us uh, right now being used, uh, we could either have it wired uh, link or you could, we could have a as wireless link. It would be popularly called an air or space, right? Now we could have, as I said, we could have a system that is basically one, one shot of that 
or you could have a, a, a bigger system that would consist of many of these systems. And we will take a look at that once we get to the end, once we get to the end uh, of this presentation here, right? How are we doing? Oh, we're doing great with time. All right, um, so examples of transducers. Let's see if I could zoom things in a little bit so we could, all right, essential parts of telecommunication or communication system. Uh, transducer converts basically what we said energy from one to another or a signal from one to another. Okay. Um, examples of that we microphone, you know, converts sound into electrical energy. Loudspeaker, see here's that loudspeaker. Loudspeaker is basically that device that we call a speaker. Right? Uh, and then, uh, well, that, com that would convert the electrical uh, energy back to the sound waves, right? So these two can work in pairs. Uh, and uh, another example would be antenna. They would convert electrical energy into electromagnetic waves and vice versa. So antenna could um, serve as some sort of a transceiving, transceiving, transmitting and receiving kind of a device. Although uh, these two here also could be treated as such because um, if you connect an electronic or electric electronic pulses, into the microphone and use the microphone as an output uh, instead of an input. Uh, try to be careful with that because you know if we try try it with a cheap microphone because you can damage it. But if you can uh, connect a relatively low signal into a microphone, put the microphone to your ear, you are actually going to hear sound coming out of the microphone. Or uh, quite often, speakers or loudspeakers are being used as microphones. A biggest example of that would be a lot of us went to high school. And in high school, there would be something that's called a PA system. And the PA system would be uh, that little square or, or round speaker that is in the wall. And the teacher would press the button to talk to the main office. Well, there is no microphone and speaker. There's just one device as a speaker. And that speaker is being used as a speaker when the, the office talks to the classroom and when the circuitry is being switched, the circuitry is made to use that speaker as a microphone. Uh, so, uh, so a speaker also can be, a loudspeaker can be also used as a microphone. It's a transducer. So these will be the transducers here. Uh, keep going. Ooh. Okay. Signal processor transmitter. Uh, apply, it could be applied as a system or it could be applied individually depending on the purpose and situation. Let's see uh, uh, some examples of a uh, signal processor or transmitter. An audio mixing console, well, that would be a signal processor. It would collect multiple signals and combine them into one common output signal. So it'll be an audio mixing console right here. Radio transmitter generates radio frequency, which is applied to the antenna via transmitter, right? Wireless access point or WAP, W-A-P, wireless access point. We have a lot of those in our school or pretty much any commercial building. It would see those. Uh, uh, sometimes they're called WAPs. Sometimes they're called APs, uh, wireless access point or Wi-Fi uh, devices, right? Uh, so um, that would be the the signal processing device that uh, you would use to connect with your cell phones, laptops, and whatnot into our, for example, our school's network. So that's the, uh, uh, that's the wireless transceiver or transmitter and receiver in one. All right. Uh, and over here, we have something like a shortwave radio transceiver. Uh, a lot of enthusiasts, enthusiasts still are going strong with the um, with the short wave uh, experimenting and uh, playing around with, all right? So uh, yeah, so the wireless uh, would be bidirectional. Wireless access point would be considered as bidirectional because it can transmit and receive, and it can do it at the same time, pretty much. Um, antenna also is a bidirectional device. Most of the transducers would. Uh, would work as bidirectional devices. But over here, we're talking about a transmitter, signal processor transmitter, all right? Transmission link, uh, we're gonna spend some time over that, um, over these, um, uh, as we go along through our course uh, journey. 
Um, so transmission link part of the essential parts of telecommunications. Well, it's a signal transfer medium. All right. What kind of a medium is it? Is that the medium that is going to uh, um, talk to your dead relatives? No, that's not the type of a medium. The medium is a, a material that can carry a signal. It's an object that can carry a signal and translate from one form to another. So we distinguish three basic types of media that, uh, that uh, we use in telecommunications these days. One will be air or space, copper or fiber. And the fiber, I was, I'm, I'm trying forever to see whether, uh, uh, which way the fiber should be spelled. And I, all over the place, I see both ways of uh, spelling the fiber, you know, which would be fiber, like that, or sometimes, or sometimes like that. Okay, and uh, is one better than the other? You're going to see some companies spelling it this way and some companies spelling it that way. And the second one, the fiber, is, uh, seems to be uh, taking over uh, lately, okay? All right, so uh, we could have air, copper, which would be something like a data cable uh, or a speaker cable or a microphone cable, which would be uh, used as uh, copper. Sometimes aluminum is being used, but uh, generally speaking, we consider this thing as copper because copper is the most commonly used. So it's just stacked that way. Isn't fiber for food and fiber for cables? Uh, yeah, um, you could say that, but then again, you're going to see those uh, words interchangeably used. Uh, all over the place. Uh, in fact, yesterday I was driving around uh, London East type of the East, like um, Northeast. And I could see the uh, uh, fiber to homes or something like that. Uh, some company was advertising and it was spelling the uh, um, uh, F-I-B-R-E. So you know what? I gave up. Um, sometimes when you're writing some article or uh, or scientific material or anything like that, or uh, then uh, you just pick one and stick to it all the way through. Just try not to use it interchangeably. Or whenever you're working for whatever company, try to find out which way they are spelling it and you just stick with that. Hey, you know, one of those. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so we will talk about uh, not as much air, but we are going to cover some of that air, uh, air mediums uh, or air medium uh, devices. Uh, copper, we're going to spend a lot of time, and we're also going to spend uh, some time with the optical fiber or fiber optics uh, in our course. Yeah. Uh, and we will do some hands-on exercise that involve those as well. Receiver. Well, radio receiver, audio amplifier, wireless access point. Um, uh, the, these would be the examples of a receiver. And we went over that already uh, a couple of minutes ago. So I'm not going to spend too much time on this slide. All right. So to end this portion of the presentation, before we step into another, yeah, we have lots of time. Uh, we can identify some essential parts in this system here. I wonder if you can see this clearly or not, but uh, if there is anyone that can tell me what type of a system it is uh, just by looking at it. Uh, we probably can take about switchboards. We got one switchboard. Uh, who else can speak up? I don't have any rewards to give you, but uh, you will have a satisfaction of saying something. You can speak up if you want, or on voice as well. I'll give you a couple seconds more to figure out what possibly could this be, could this system be? There's one something uh, at the bottom left, there's a PA system. Yeah, okay. Uh, audio deck, okay. There's one thing that it's a dead giveaway of what that is. Uh, what that could possibly be. Uh, and if you look towards the left, mid middle left part of the screen, you're going to see, I wonder if you can see the uh, 
Choir mics. Okay, so what could that system be? Huh? <laughs> Audio setup, yes, it's a choir mics. So that would be what type of a building would this system be installed in? Church, all right. School as well, yeah, but mostly uh, uh, church sound systems or um, when you go into the technical literature about, uh, and it's, it, believe me, it's quite deep actually. And uh, and there's, it's, it's a, you know, it's a pretty much okay, big business. Uh, some people call it church systems, or some people call it house of worship, okay? Uh, just to include all the um, um, you know, churches, temples, and whatnot. Uh, so uh, over here, what do we have here? We have the choir mics. Uh, and this would be the transducer. We will go into the input process signal processor, right? Then it would be the, into the output signal processor, which would be the 70-volt amplifier, which we are actually using in our lab, uh, the first lab, which says PA system. The lab says PA system, but this is uh, the one that we are putting together. It's just a tiny bit of a PA system. The whole thing here could be considered as a PA system. PA system, PA stands for public address, okay? Uh, so, uh, um, so this part here, the 70 volt amp or the constant ad, the constant voltage or distributed audio system, we have the main trunk line and they go to the, the line goes to the volume controls and it's being connected into the speakers. Those speakers, for example, in uh, church, they will be connected to something uh, maybe foyer or hallway. Uh, or uh, also um, they are being installed in things that are called crying rooms, right? Uh, if anybody goes to church uh, or otherwise house of worship, you can tell that sometimes during the service, uh, there's always someone that comes with a baby and the baby just decides to cry. And it does just, the baby doesn't want to stop crying. So um, you know, to, to, to make everybody's life a little happier, there are separate rooms for that purpose. So the mom can uh, take the baby to something that's called a crying room. So, so the baby can cry all he or she wants uh, and it's not going to distract uh, um, the, the, the whole service. Um, and though, but uh, the mom also wants to you know, hear. So usually it's behind the glass uh, and you can see and you can hear through those speakers and you can have a volume control if you want to crank it up louder or turn it down a little bit. So that would be uh, one of those. Then we have the stage microphone, the stage uh, system. So stage system here. Uh, one of them would be the speaker monitors. Here we can see the floor monitors and these are being placed on the floor and pointed upwards so you could hear what you're saying to people. And if you, there's any instruments involved, you can also hear uh, all the instruments playing uh, so you're not, uh, uh, you're not in the dark as far as the sound. And this will be the main uh, front of the house speakers. Front of the house speakers are the speakers that are basically uh, projecting the sound to the public. And so it's called FOH, front of the house. Right? Or this would be the hear back monitors and different channels of the amplifiers. Here is another uh, processing element uh, that uh, has a little bit of EQ going on because you don't want to have something that's called a feedback. And we'll talk about that as well. Over here, we have some other satellite devices, such as a digital recorder, you can record things. And we have a wireless system, and we have the podium and lectern mics and, uh, and whatnot. So uh, just that, uh, just if you just consider this one wireless mic, this all these essential parts are within that one right there. So here's an input transducer, will be microphone. Here will be a link between the microphone, and here's the, okay, so here's a signal processor, like a radio transmitter. And here's a radio receiver. Uh, so uh, it has a transducer, it has a processor. There's a link which is being used to space or air to, pay, to, uh, to, to send a signal into the wireless receiver. And then that becomes the transducer sort of, right? And it sends a signal to the processor. So it's just layers and layers uh, on thing, uh, of things. You can, that, uh, that system I showed you, you can apply to pretty much any uh, communication system uh, that's there, all right? Uh, now, structure cabling, what's involved? Um, I think we went over that because this here, uh, 
Well, we can, uh, no, we didn't go over that last time. If we did, just uh, raise your hand, I'll speak up and I'll, uh, I'll move on to the next uh, part, all right? So um, uh, part of it is structured cabling, what's involved. Uh, this would be uh, over here where we could see on the left is a uh, something that's called a Bix frame. And we are going to talk, uh, we're going to have one lab that involves a um, 20, something that's called 25 pair cable termination. And uh, we are going to pair that lab with lab number two. Notice that we're only doing lab number one not lab number two together because I just decided that uh, you know what I'm going to pair lab two with lab six, right? Which uh, and you will see why. Right? It's just better that way. Okay, uh, so um, it's a it's a cabling distribution system. Uh, this picture I took somewhere in Toronto when I was sent for a service call to reroute some of the phone system in one of the restaurants that was being remodeled, all right? So sometimes you're going to encounter this type of thing. Now, this is uh, another part, uh, another um, thing that I took a picture of. It's one of the restaurants uh, that uh, needed to be cleaned up, all right? Because, uh, well, they had something like that. It's just basically the, uh, the uh, equipment falling out of the equipment room and they were wondering why the communication is intermittent there right so uh, sometimes you'd be involved in that kind of stuff um structured wiring this is an example of a data wiring system and there's an art to it i remember um uh, well some some of us that uh, were already during the lab uh, Mr. Schizer and I, we talked about uh, wiring, uh, the wires, the wiring techniques or the technique of cabling. Um, as far as the data, people who are involved with data, I would say they will be the cleanest people as far as wiring goes. Why? Because instead of connecting one or two things together, you're connecting hundreds of things together. Over here, there would be probably almost like 800 point-to-point uh, -point connections here. And if you are not clean and neat as far as the wiring, uh, then you never ever make heads and tails out of what you have done. And never mind uh, finding out how to connect the system once you, once you run the wires and install them, uh, never mind troubleshooting. Yeah. So uh, uh, my wife, I'm just came back. Sorry, I'm late. That's good, all right? Uh, we are going to have this thing on YouTube as well, so you can watch uh, whatever you missed. Right? Uh, systems that are involved with, uh, in, um, um, well, the network systems or data telecommunication systems, all right? Um, well, we have the whole data infrastructure can't imagine a building, a commercial building, even a residential building with, without some sort of a data infrastructure, internet, um, land, local area network, and so on. Telephony, that's a big part of it. CCTV, that's closed circuit television. Usually uh, refer, it just refers to the surveillance or security cameras, but not only, all right? So security surveillance, I put it as a separate entity here, entry. Uh, security alarms, nurse call, fire alarms, PA commercial or uh, commercial simple all call or PA sound systems, public address. That's mostly the, uh, uh, this would be mostly um, uh, considered as the, well, sound systems or PA systems, public address. Access control, um, very popular uh, systems these days. Uh, these will be the, um, you swipe your card um, or uh, you, you have a key fob and you flash it in front of the reader and the door is open, the doors are opening, systems being armed and disarmed and so on. Retail, um, not forget retail, that's a big chunk of the business. All the cash registers are basically a um, working computers. Uh, I remember that uh, used to be time that nothing was connected to the internet and the cash register would be, I press a few buttons and the machine would make a really weird noise and 
bang, that drawer would pop open. And whoever was there at the piano counter would give you the change and put the money into the cash register and close it. Nothing was connected. Right now, if the power goes out and nobody, if nobody has any, if somebody doesn't have any backup system, you can even go to a variety store sometimes and buy even a chewing gum because you can't process that through the whole system, right? So uh, there's a big business involved in that. Systems, um, when it comes to, uh, um, um, where do we step in uh, things to shine about or shine in or things to choose or directions to go uh, of how you want to approach that if you want to approach that and how you deal with those would be the working knowledge so I don't know, you have to have the working knowledge in order to be able to either sell install service or commission it right? uh installation there's a big chunk of business doing just installations setups commissioning commissioning would be for example a system is installed and you need someone to uh come over and explain to the whole staff of some office building or factory or something of actually how the system that you got a new big phone system and you need to learn how to use the specific features of that uh, so there will be a one person for spending a whole day with the people explaining them the whole thing like commissioning something that we have installed now let me talk about it see what the, all these buttons are for yeah. service uh, things break down uh, service is a big chunk of a business as well and of course uh, for those separate entities on the bottom design and sales also, what I could have included here would be something that's called a project management. Right? So that would be uh, part of the bottom part that would have to do with the design and sales. But once you have a few projects on the go, a company, you need some people to manage that. So I would encourage you to, uh, if somebody is fascinated about uh, installing things or designing things or making things work or doing the service calls, I would just encourage you to even put some of that project management or design and sales in the back burner, do not uh, cross it out from the possibilities, right? Yeah, because after so many years, if you're doing that, you might get bored of that of doing the same thing all that uh, all over again, or you might something might speak inside you that maybe you can offer a little bit different services to the company and to the field. So, if you have a chance to take any kind of project management courses in whatever field you work, I would strongly encourage you to consider that. And that's all I'm gonna say about that, Boris Gamp. All right, uh, data, what's involved in data? Well, we know mostly is running the copper wires and fiber wires, making things connect and knowing how the systems work. Uh, sometimes you design those and sometimes you, uh, you rely on other people who design it and they will um, uh, they will send you the documentation. And in, in terms of work orders that we are dealing with during our labs, uh, and then you're going to install things, troubleshoot, service, whatnot, and you're going to prepare the deliverables. And don't forget, there's a reason why I'm asking you to take pictures because right now everybody that gives you work in that in this sort of field of pretty much all the other fields any kind of service work installations they require pictures and some of them they require not only they require pictures but they require them in a certain way and if you don't give it to them in a certain exactly the way they're asking you they will reject your documentation and some of them will just look for any possible reason to reject your documentation because if they reject the documentation, they don't have to pay you or they don't have to pay you now, they can pay you later. So uh, paperwork when it comes to um, deliverables, extremely, extremely important, just as doing the job. Right? Uh, telephony, uh, on the left, we have the proprietary systems or POTS, okay? I was a proprietary system, a proprietary system is a phone system that utilizes pods, which will be the plain old telephone service lines, the simplest line, form of lines that gets to your house. And um, those lines are being connected to those, to that box that is called a telephone system. And the telephone, that telephone system has its, um, its own way of signal processing. 
and it has its own telephone uh, sets that only work with that box. So that would be a proprietary telephone system right? or a conventional telephone system, still called conventional telephone system. But that might change in a few years. Maybe the VoIP will be called conventional, you know, things change, right? But for now, this these would be called conventional telephone systems. And over here, uh, this telephone here, that's a regular POTS phone. Sometimes it's called SL phone, for sense for single line telephone set, which means this is the one that you can just buy in any kind of a department store. You plug it into the wall that you get the regular POTS service, so the regular telephone service, and that phone is going to work. Over here, it's a proprietary telephone system that works only, and this one is Norton Meridian, okay, and by Norton Telecom. Now, there's a, um, these are very famous phones at one time. They, you can still buy the new ones, even though the company doesn't exist. Somebody still makes them new uh, somewhere because they're just so good. Mm -hmm. uh, but these would be so-called conventional telephone system that utilize mostly pots, lines for the most part, which would be the regular telephone lines. Over here, it would be something that's called a VoIP telephone system. And the VoIP telephone system can be locally installed, which means you get the equipment, the box that is called a telephone system on premises. In the building, there's a physical box that serves as a telephone system. It's a switching box that switches all the and routes, all the telephone calls and supplies all the features like call waiting or transferring calls and you know, music on hold and things like that. Or you could have a hosted system, which means um, you get a bunch of telephone sets that uh, basically are smart. They are smart devices in a way that they understand the Ethernet protocol. Right? The Ethernet, not Internet, Ethernet, which would be the internal wiring of the, that, the internal data wiring of a facility or a building. Right? And they connect to the patch panels and into the switches and into the network, basically, just as a computer would. And there is, but there is no any physical box that says as a phone system, all the signal logic and the routing and uh, routing calls and call processing happens somewhere else uh, over the internet. Right? So there could be a company in Montreal that is selling something that's called a VoIP system, and they would send you the pre-programmed phones, and your network has to be done in a certain way, it has to fulfill certain specifications for that thing to work. And you just uh, convert those, you program those phones, connect them, and the whole thing happens over the internet. There's a dedicated connection called VPN, we'll talk about that, called Virtual Private Network. And the whole signal processing, even if you could be in London, Ontario, all the phone system routing signaling box would be in Montreal, right? Uh, and we will expand on that as we go along. Right? So there's a difference between locally and hosted system. We'll talk about that later uh, for the lectures. And also, I I just kind of did it like a shady shaded uh, sort of um, um, way. I call a hybrid and hybrid system would be conventional telephone systems that use the something that's called SIP lines, session initiation protocol lines, because VoIP systems do not use POTS lines. They do not use POTS lines, they use SIP lines, session initiation, initiation protocol. Um, yeah line it stands for sip um, now sometimes people want to save money and it actually makes sense in some cases that you can have the sip lines but you need some sort of a media converter to convert those sort of like virtual internet based lines would be the sip lines into uh, they go they're connected into a processor or a media converter so so to speak um, and that converter would convert those internet virtual lines into something that behaves like the POTS lines. And you can have, and can still use your old system um, while you don't use the POTS lines, but you're using the uh, SIP lines, right? Okay. Telephony, so we went over that. 
CCTV. What's involved with CCTV? Well, mostly surveillance. There'll be security cameras. And over here, you can see a big room of people watching and analyzing whatever visuals they get. And there are companies that actually ser um, service, you can buy the service from companies that they will watch your security cameras and they will alert you or the authorities if something out of ordinary happens there, right? Uh, so uh, you can have uh, small or big systems. This would be the city installed uh, systems, uh, cameras. Uh, CCTV also is a popular thing, uh, or it was. Uh, now things are changing a little bit, but some, for example, schools still have the CCTV in their schools, which is basically a television network. Uh, and if the school has a broadcasting class, so maybe every Friday afternoon, the broadcasting department or the broadcasting class would get the whole school to switch to that channel and they would just get the news and whatnot when they're learning how to broadcast, okay? Uh, all right, uh, security alarms, also a big business uh, when it comes to telecommunications. Um, well, security alarms. You get clients or you work for somebody, you, <coughs> excuse me, you install the security alarms okay? and service. Uh, nurse call systems, also a big chunk. I seem to be using the big chunk thing. I keep saying that a lot. Sometimes we get hung on to certain words, so I apologize for that. I'll try to not use that colloquialism for the rest of this presentation. So this is a big chunk of the business. <laughs> gotcha. All right. Uh, so <clears throat> uh, nurse call systems, uh, they are being installed in hospitals. So it's a big business. Or they're also being installed in something that's called uh, nurse call, uh, nursing homes or retirement homes. Okay? The first two, uh, for the most part, in uh, wherever they exist um, um, in the world, uh, hospitals and the nursing homes, uh, they would have a mandatory thing to install that. Uh, retirement homes, uh, it's a borderline. You can, have, uh, as far as I think it's still, um, it's like that where we are here. If uh, somebody operates a retirement home, they do not have to have a nurse call system. But if they decide to purchase one and install it, then once it's there, it has to work properly. Right. So that's the trick a little bit. Uh, that's the little button by your bed. If you're in the hospital that you want to call for help or nurse or you're in trouble or need some assistance. Um, that is the, basically the, the, the sometimes they're being referred to as call bells. Okay. And there is a whole science that is involved, just like the school PA systems, the nurse call systems. Uh, they're not just a little thing to press the button and, 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 and shine the light. Uh, but we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, fire alarms. Uh, there's a, a bit of a specific niche that uh, that is involved uh, with the communications. That the for special licensing is involved uh, when um, when in, when it comes to fire alarm systems, and there is laws and regulations depending on where you are in the world, which country you're in, they would have their own bylaws that have to do with the fire alarm installations, okay? But uh, this is one of those things that there's some extensive licensing is required, uh, which we also offer in our school uh, when it comes to fire alarm systems. There are other schools as well, but uh, we're the best. Of course we are. Huh? Uh, so you can, if you're interested in that kind of stuff, talk to me. I uh, will, uh, um, I might point you in the right direction. Save you some time. Right. Excuse me, school PA systems. Uh, this is the old, old Duquesne system that was used in a school P, uh, as school PA. Still in some smaller schools in some remote locations, uh, they're being used because they don't need anything more. Uh, it's all in one system. All the classrooms are connected here and you push a button if you want to talk to a classroom and you push a button to, if you want to speak or listen, things like that. Some of the newer ones, they will have the whole guts and the brains somewhere tucked in a corner and on the desktop, you will start of having a big bulky thing. You will just have something that looks like a telephone console. Right? School PA systems used to talk from the main office. So the main office at the school can contact any classroom or if they need to make an all-call page. 
Uh, then there's a church PA system. There's church PA systems. Uh, another specific niche, uh, heavily involved with acoustics and whatnot, and the structures and history. And you have to have a special touch. If you feel like you want to get into that kind of stuff again, talk to me. Over thirty years, it's hard to say what I was not involved with uh, when it comes to telecommunications. Um, so I also have extensive experience with, when dealing with that. If you are interested in this, talk to me. Uh, I'll also point you in the right direction, all right? Distributed audio. This is this lab that this the, that we're doing this uh, over the next two weeks. Look, these are the ceiling speakers that we are installing. And over here, it could be a volume control, for example. Right? Um, so you could have... Um, um, you could have a music, soft music playing through them, or you could have the announcements if you need to. Right? Most of the commercial, in most of the areas right now, if it's a commercial building, you need to have some sort of a PA system in order to warn people of hazards, dangers, and things like that. Uh, stage audio, another huge niche. It's a niche, but it's a huge thing as well. Big chunk of the business. Yeah, all right. <laughs> um, well, stage audio could be divided into, you can have like a theatrical type of uh, system, or you could have the good old rock and roll type of uh, uh, stage uh, audio. They are very similar as far as approach. But um, the science that is involved in one and the other varies slightly. And there's also home theater, uh, that also a big chunk of the business. All right, uh, so, um, uh, so that's also part of the uh, telecommunications. Access control. Well, there's a lady who's swiping the card in the card reader and something's gonna happen. Probably the door is going to open for her, right? Big, uh, big part of it. Retail, look at those. Cash register, cash register, PC, computer, computer. All this stuff has to be connected somewhere, somehow, in some sort of a way, and it has to work, and it has to be serviced. Big chunk of the business. <laughs> and that's pretty much it for the, uh, as far as the overall view of, uh, uh, of the telecommunications. We'll continue on as we get... Uh, as we get back with each other to a week from now. Huh? Uh, lab, you know what? The labs, um, can I go over? No, I'm just going to go over some of that stuff uh, next week. Uh, quickly go over the way the distributed audio works, right? But in the meantime, you're going to get the hands-on experience first. So if you get the hands-on experience first and you look at the theory, you go, go, aha, so that's how it works, right? Or if you get the theory first and then uh, you get the hands-on, you're also going to say, aha, that's how it works. So I just go post because both ways, I'm not worrying about that, right? You're going to learn the same thing. We're all going to be at the same point when the time comes. All right, so it's 10 to one. Uh, I understand you have another class. So I was, I'm just watching the clock here to, uh, to not hold you for too long. Uh, so we don't have to panic. Um, and that's pretty much it. Is there any, are there any questions involving anything that we have done so far or that we're doing at present? Uh, all good. Well, if it's all good, then I'm all happy and you should be happy too. All right. Okay. Cool, guys. I will see you when I see you next week. And Mr. Shizzo is going to see you during the labs. Have a great rest of the week. Thank you.